Langchain can be divided conceptually into six main components and a schema describing the data types used. They include text, chat messages, examples, and documents. Text is the most used data type as a lot of interfaces in Langchain are broadly speaking text in, text out. But for the end user is chat messages more tangible, mostly due to the popularity of OpenAI ChatGPT. Examples are used to fine tune the model and document is just a representation of a piece of unstructured data. It consists of page content and some metadata. Now we come to the main components starting with models. Different models have different type of input and outputs. Langchain is a wrapper for large language models or LLMs. These LLMs take a text as input and return text as output. The more structured models are chat models. They take a list of messages as input and return one message as output. Finally, there are text embedding models. These take a text as input and return a list of floats as output, which is actually a vector representation of the data. Next, we have prompts. A prompt value represents an input to the model. It can be a static text. To build dynamic prompt values, we use prompt template, which acts like a Python F strings and puts some input to variables. We can improve our prompts with example selectors to define how we expect our output. And finally, the output parser can structure the response in formats like CSV or other structured data. Indexes help us structure our data so that the LLMs can interact with them. The process has some steps. First, we have to load our data. There are more than 50 types of document loaders for any kind of data ranging from text to Notion to EPUBs and other types of data. When loading documents, especially if they are large data like PDFs, it is better to chunk them to into small pieces. This can be done with or without overlapping data, depending on the content. By converting our data and user queries to embeddings, we can retrieve relevant text from our documents. But first, we have to store our data using embedding models in vector stores. Then we use semantic search on our vector stores to get the relevant chunks of data based on our query and finally pass them to a language model. Memory is straightforward. There are two types of memory, short-term and long-term. Short-term memory remembers the history of our chat messages in a single conversation, while the long-term memory between multiple conversations. With chains, we can combine multiple components to a step-by-step -step workflow. Langchain provides a standard interface for chains and provides some implementations like LLM chain, sequential chain, transformation chain, and so on. We can even create our own chain, as a chain is just an end-to-end -end wrapper around one or multiple components. The most common type of chain is LLM chain. It consists of a prompt template, a model, and optionally an output parser. With index-related chains, we can connect our data with LLMs. This enables us to chat with our own PDFs or Notion notes or our second brain created in Obsidian. Hereby, it is important how we pass our data to the model. If our data is small, we can pass all of them at once using the stuffing method. Otherwise, we have to chunk the data using methods like refine, map reduce, or map re-rank. After we pass our data to the model, we need a suitable prompt to get the good answer from the model. Different models need different prompts. Prompt selector is responsible for choosing the best prompt based on the selected model. And now comes the most interesting part. Some apps require only the execution of a predefined chain, but some other need to decide which chain to execute. Agents use LLMs and tools to define which actions to take and in which order. A tool is a specific abstraction around a function that performs a specific duty like searching the web or do some calculation or access a database. We can provide an agent with predefined tools. 
An agent can, depending on the user input, decide which tools to use and which chains to execute. There are four agent types, but the most common one is Zero Shot React Description. This agent uses React Framework to choose the tools based on their description. And then we have Toolkits. Toolkits are a group of tools to perform a specific task like accessing Pandas or Jira or Power BI or just an SQL database. Our last building block is Agent Executor, which is actually the logic behind deciding the tools and the order of the calls. This was a brief overview of Langchain components. There are two implementations of Langchain available online, one in Python and one in JavaScript. Depending on your needs and skills, you can use one of them to connect your apps to LLMs using Langchain.